dick pressed the button. My dick pressed the button. Wombo. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Or does it not? Mm, I don't know. Can't tell. I said I didn't warn you. Nah, 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 nah. 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 Do you like the Actually, like the background I choose? I think it's very fitting. Uh, background you chose more like you don't choose it. It's not like it's done in the present. Yeah, it is. Doesn't make any fucking sense. You don't make any fucking sense. I already knew that. Oh, <clears throat> well, never mind. Also, I got the burpins. <laughs> nice. People get Burn upset about burpins burp sometimes, but I don't care. I am burper. Burper the aggressor. Uh, it's a movie about a robot that burps. <laughs> I'd watch that movie. That sounds sounds great. In theory. I wonder what the themes are. Bowel movement? There's probably all of them, actually. Oh. Uh, Just every theme. Every theme? As a Sounds like a bit of a sludge if movie. If you could come up with one, they got it. Damn. You know, that's good stuff. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, doo -doo. Wait, it says 10 viewers, but nobody's saying hi in chat? What's that about? Well, my stream lab still says zero, because it's very smart. <laughs> Every theme I blow hole. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, Drace. <laughs> Fucking nasty, bruh. Hello, Good everybody. How you doing? Good morning. Did you look Good at morning. the time? Did you look at my time? It's like the opposite of morning. Time is uh, relative, so, you know? Fine. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. What up, babies? I was just, just, just hanging out now. Do Don't you say that? To talk. Okay, sorry, jeez. I mean, I thought, man, it's my morning, so that's what you get. Fine. This Finally. is the best we've got. Take it. <laughs> You find a lesson and started streaming after my lunch. Good on your metal. Yeah, see, um, I learned sometimes. Hey, Kaz, hello. Time is a construct. Fake German time. Wow, that's that's very offensive to German people. I think. Hey, man. Yeah, lost the track now. No quality options. Oh, of course we don't have any today. Well, sad day. I had to praise it yesterday when I said, I was really lucky these last couple of weeks. <laughs> I did warn you never to say that. Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So you've been, you've been playing more Halo or you've just been... No, I've just away? been working. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just. I meant to play more Halo. Maybe one day. When life is calmer. Yeah. It is a really fun game. I have a lot of fun. Oh, is it now? Playing it. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I mean, Liar! We talked about it extensively on we did? the old uh, forums. Oh my god. At least, no, 20, this. At least 20 minutes. <laughs> Times a million. <laughs> I'm feeling that's too many. It's... That's too many? Oh. Well, maybe it's a little bit you less than that. You fucked it up when you said that. Okay, fine. But we did talk about it. It was, it was fun, I think. Um, yeah. And then it got all doomy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> I think we were all doomed with that shit. I, it's just funny because we always have that, like, oh, man, to be back in the days. Yeah. The olden days. It, it is one of those things where it's like, I wonder if you actually did manage to go back, would it be anywhere near as fun as you remember it? Probably not. Probably not, but... I'd be looking critically at still. some of things when I, go, when I would go back now. I imagine, you know, like Gears of War, for example, I imagine that I've forgotten a lot of its, like, maybe, like, the lag or something I got used to, and nowadays I'd be like, ew. <laughs> ew. <laughs> I never played any Xbox Live or the PlayStation. I guess was PlayStation Live back then still? So I don't know. But I never uh, really PSN, it. right? That's what it was called. Right, yeah. But if I look at it today in the PS Live thingy, 
when you play stream games and it's absolute dog shit. I don't even want to think about how it is in multiplayer games. Yes. So yes, hello Chad. Hello. What what is that? Short. Still says only seven euros, but I think Streamlabs is just shit, and I have to change it because they're scum. So that is a thing I need to do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you did you hear about that at all? The whole Streamlabs shenanigans. Um, the they thing about them basically stole everything they they are using. What does that mean for us? Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean it still works, but. I don't know. They just stole everything. Mm. <laughs> just put the OBS name on there, even though OBS was like, could you please not do that? And then they did it and filed a trademark. <laughs> and now people are shitting on Streamlabs and they were like, okay, sorry, we're putting, we do get rid of the OBS thingy. It's like, ah. Oh, so it's going to get renamed, is it? It al already is, because that's like 10 minutes of web work. We just delete the OBS part out of everything. Oh fuck! So linked to the thing, the Midnight's Edge is talking with uh, Daddy Treo. That's awesome. Oh, nice. <laughs> machete, 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 machete. Machete. I need to rewatch those movies. Those were fun. I, I had a lot of fun with those movies. Oh boy. Well, yeah. I only got ten ninety. 60 FPS an option. Yeah, it's it's the RNG quality options on Twitch, unfortunately. Uh, high metal, and I guess high molar. I also guess. Okay, okay. It's a lot of guessing. Hello, me. I don't know what you're working on, but I hope that you're at least having fun. Also, hello, friend of molar. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they were inspired Co by a son stealing content. <laughs> Cosmo put out a tweet where he said, we live in an age where more people are watching TV and movies than ever before, but that does not exactly mean they understand them any better. And I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> You're so right. Yeah, what happens? I agree with you. Fuck. Problem is a little thing called self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, 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 well. I watched I Am Mother a few days ago. It was all right. Uh, okay, very good. Yeah, how many people have actually seen the movie? How it told them to? Yeah, Mel, I'll give you homework, guys. Come yeah, on. Yeah, what the fuck? I even give you a, a week think, more. I think we're getting detention. Yeah, you gotta get da -da -da. Didn't want to have to do it, but you know. Haven't seen this movie, so you guys have fun. Also, hello, Mewpshly. No worries, Fredo. Or You should watch it, though. It's good stuff. I have. Well, I maybe it. maybe that's in question today, and we shall have to discover such things. Oh, boy. <clears throat> I was like two years ago. Barely remember stuff. When, when did the movie come out? Was it 2020? No. Wait. Do you remember, Mewpshly? 2019? 2019. Oh, okay. I am a mother. <laughs> 2019, for, yeah. Okay. For a second, I was like, is that three years ago now? <laughs> Probably. I don't fucking know. It's almost three years ago, yeah. Oh, no. Does that mean that Shelly is going to punish me? I have been a bad chatter. Do it. Do it. Well, German tell okay, people no. to do again. Yeah? Maybe you just fucking do it this time so I don't have to invade everyone again. It's really annoying. It's hard work. Oh, is I Am Mother an MCU movie? Boy, I sure do love those. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <clears throat> oh, man. Unreal just trying to get a little bit closer to the truth. That's all we should want, but instead, so many people think they know everything. Tss, tss, tss. Yeah. Also, fuck you, Metal. That's six years of college. No more homework. Well, get out. Detention for you. <laughs> oh. Oh, Grace. I am Motlo. I don't see that movie. <laughs> I am Motlo. Hi, German Welsh. Hello, I am Mumblings. Mumblings. I just passed 100k points to kick the J. Oh, trollololo. <laughs> so, hello. What up, Amil? What up? Well, I guess I'll give like a, a couple, like two, four, two, three, four minutes. See if there's anyone still want to jump in on the chat 
And I guess we just get in, get 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 into it. Do do do. Uh, didn't you have like a little story how you found that movie? I did. Yeah. Um. So, anyone ever heard of a film called The Dead Don't Die? Oh shit! Yeah, that's how it started. <laughs> one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, one of the worst. It's an anti movie. I would almost consider doing a video on it someday to just talk about how much it's not at all the entertainment that we sign up for. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of fascinating in that way, and I'm pretty sure it's done like that on purpose. But I, I mean, it's it's kind of like someone punches you and goes, "Aren't you hurt?" You're like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." So that's that. Um. <laughs> I don't even know why I started watching that. I think I was just browsing Netflix or something somewhere. And then I was like, I finished it. I talked to Metal about how much I hated it. <laughs> and then um, I was like, oh, uh, Red Letter Media probably have coverage of it. I want to see what they said. And they said pretty much the same thing. Um, and I let the video run. And they started talking about Ghost Story. Or A Ghost Story, I think. It's still a movie I want to see just for the front cover. Uh, and they recommended it. I was like, hmm. So I'll see that at some point, hopefully. But I was like, I don't know if, um, you know, it's on Netflix. And if it is, I can just watch it there easily instead of having to figure out some other way. Um, I didn't even check Amazon. I probably should have. But hmm. regardless, I type in a ghost story. And the first result I got was I am mother. And I was like, what? <laughs> That's not even close to what I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, And... Uh, the reason I was interested is because it was called I Am Mother, and the thumbnail had a robot strangling somebody. And I was like, what in the world could be the context <laughs> for this? Um, and then I that made that was enough to make me click the thing. And then I read the synopsis, and I was like, yeah, okay. I'll watch this. And then I did. And I guess that's, that's how I found it. It was a very bizarre uh, thing to have found this way. Yeah. Yeah. Laziest EFAP ever. There's only two of you. I, know, right? <laughs> I think that's actually the first time we do something like this. Only us two. Like normally it's only games. And now we do we do, do the, the, a movie thing. What a, what a crazy crazy year. Yeah. I, um. I don't know how we should deliver all of the information for everybody, but I guess it's. I'll say that I ended up seeing it, and it's obvious that I spread it through everybody. So it's pretty unlikely I would do that if it was an average <laughs> movie, in my opinion. It would have to be pretty bad or pretty good. Um, yeah. But um, I thought it was neat on my first run through, and then after my second run through, I was like, actually, this is pretty great. Yeah. Um, what... Showed Fringy. He really liked it. And then I showed you guys. Yeah, you did. That was, uh, yeah, it was, uh... it was the same for me. It was like, first I was like, that was neat. And I was like, it would be fun to talk about on this new insert name of thing i'm doing here <laughs> <laughs> uh and i watch it again and I, yeah i also think it's pretty pretty darn good uh they do a lot of stuff you do not notice on your first watch through yeah it's got a little secret movie running at the same time as the movie yeah it's good it's good stuff metal philmander <laughs> i will go watch this week I will go rewatch this this week. I think. Yeah, you should. It's more uh, rewatching the thing. Yeah, is your is your plan to sort of deliver it as though for the people because there's people who are listening to this who won't see the movie at all. So yeah, I, I I've written <clears throat> down like a like a short thingy. So basically, it's just gonna go through the movie. Just basically like this is what happens and this is how it goes, and then we will just jump ahead and go into detail. Because there's a lot of really neat details in this that really elevates the movie. But as there's a bunch of people who haven't seen this, I think, uh, makes sense to just go through. Uh, let's see, wait, there's something. Uh, playing or editing supercuts of EFAP streams, like that guy who did the Bad Woman and uh, Flag and the Wizard Soldier cuts. Which EFAP breakdown do you guys think would use some condensing? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> well, presumably all of them can yeah. be condensed with their streams, but um, I don't know. People want to do that? Go right ahead. Yeah, yeah. Metal Madness movies. Meta movie madness. Metal's movie come. I don't think I'm gonna have any luck with the with metal YouTube. letter media. Chat, you gotta come up with better names than that for him to adopt them, okay? Yeah. 
Metal floor Metal beef. movie breakdown. Metal floor beef films. I plan on never seeing it because Metal told me to watch it. Quick, you should tell him to watch it. Just call your show Glorm. Glorm. Like, <laughs> um... <laughs> no indication has anything to do with movies or media. It's just like Glorm. <laughs> Get like incredible art and animations for Glorm. Metal's blowhole films. EMAP, every metal a pause. I don't want to just be another EFAP. <laughs> I want to do something on my own. I love being on EFAP, but I just don't want to rebrand so, my thing as EFAP but with M. <laughs> metal frame of pause, and it's just called MFAP. MFAP. <laughs> <laughs> metal's boo. Massive metal's movies. <laughs> with like four M's. Jeez. Now give me a little sip on the on the water. Uh <laughs> Metallica. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get in trouble with that one. <laughs> Metallica, is that taken? Huh? Let I me don't check. I think so. <laughs> Metal movie variety hours <laughs> featuring Glorbo <laughs> Jelly reviews? Ooh. Lot of, lot of tism names, which was to be expected. <laughs> Florm podcast. Jesus. <laughs> Motherfucking movies by metal. Oh jeez. Right. Talkies with metal. Because <laughs> I think in the future I, I will probably just want to talk about uh, games as well. I, I don't really see why I wouldn't do that. Just, uh, yeah, video games. Yeah. Revolutionary. I know, right? Just be boring called metal reviews. <laughs> <coughs> Flism Commander Jelly Watches. Uh, oh, I know. Okay, please bless me. Bless me with, with the. Uh, <laughs> just as gay. <laughs> German reviews. No, can't do that. Right. Uh, so should I just go through it? And uh, wh wh how we do is the best. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go through it. I believe it? you're the host, sir. Yeah, I'm just uh, thinking if there's like something more different, more different. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna start, and uh, if there's anything I'm missing, you can just. Uh, jump in and punch me in the face and say like you missed the thing fucking idiot but yeah i am mother basically we start with a little little hallway just basically it uh, says extinction that an extinction event happened and apparently there's no more humans left it's all it's like a little text crawl it says le level human level that's not what it says hu human count zero uh, and then the facility boots up and we see a robot that, uh, that, well, the robot boots up together with the facility and just goes ahead and prepares an embryo in the facility uh, where we see it, that it only needs 24 hours to grow from an embryo to a baby. And we basically just see that the robot takes the role of a mother, raises the child, teaches the child, cooks for the child, and so on. Uh, yeah, basically just showing us a little montage of things that happen just raising a child from embryo to baby to child uh, to like teenager or whatever actually i don't know uh was the child supposed to be a teenager at that point or just 18 to 20 i couldn't really tell even not to say um i don't think they're ever definitive you could probably figure it out from the timelines but um mm. i'm assuming Young adult is pretty much where we'd land. Yeah, I think I should go with that. I wasn't sure when I wrote this down. I was like, was she a teenager or still or whatever? But yeah, it's a <clears throat> young adult is probably the best way to go. Uh, wait, where? All oh, right. Uh, that's where we also see that the robot has like really human behavior. So it behaves like an, like an actual mother. It's like really real. Well, except the robot look <laughs> obviously so it's not like an like a like a skinned robot with like 
arms and shit, but it's just like it's a proper robot, as we can see on the on the background. It's like a droid. It's probably the better way to say it. Reminiscent of the Boston Dynamics stuff. I'm pretty sure they were involved in its design. Oh, really? Um, yeah, for I anybody mean, who doesn't sense. know. Now that you mention it, when you look at it, the way it moves in the in the movie as well. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. That's cool. That's neat it that is, they were actually uh, involved. That's cool. It's a suit as well. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. Which really helps out because budget-wise, it just, it just hides the budget, basically, by being that. Yeah, pretty much. The guy that got on the suit for it, he's like a skinny bro. He's really great at the robotic movements. Yeah, it looks pretty creepy once in a while when it starts like running around. It's like, huh, running robot. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. Go away. Uh, but yeah, it's like very human behavior. Uh, the robot has a has the voice of uh, is it some some famous actor? Because I'm shitty with actors and actresses, so I don't know. Her name is Rose Byrne. She's been in a couple things. Mm, okay. But you yeah. might remember her from being Achilles's girlfriend in Troy. Oh, okay, okay. Nice. She was also in the X-Men First Class and Apocalypse movies. I don't remember those because those were bad as far as I remember. <laughs> First Class is quite beloved, but Apocalypse was a joke. Okay, maybe it was that one then. They all kind of a sludge for me when I think about them because I only seen them all once. Yeah, they all mix in a little bit. <laughs> But yeah, we can just see that the the robot is really caring with the child and raises it like a you know, like a like a mother. They, as you see in the in the background, even like the the child doesn't treat it as a robot. It treats the robot as a mother. And I'm just gonna call the robot mother from now on because it's gonna be really annoying to just say the robot all the time. And also, the child is our main protagonist. Cause well, I mean, she's mm called mother throughout the film, so yeah, yeah. I'm just making it clear, I guess. And I was going to call the child the child because we don't get a name for the whole Or movie. you could call her daughter, as she's or, referred to. Or daughter, the film. yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we see, like, uh, see this. Right, then we get the time skip where the child is now, well, grown up or like a young adult, uh, whatever you want to say at that point. It's not. Duh, duh, duh. But yeah, we just get a glimpse of day-to-day -day activities we have food uh, she cooks food for for the daughter and uh, gives classes or teaches her sports I think b ballet is what they do and then at some point we also see like training at like a how do you call it like the rowing thingies what, what do you call them I don't even know I think they called a rowing machine in oh, uh, the gyms no, sometimes it's just so easy to translate and I just don't do it <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just some day-to-day -day activities uh, until that one night the facility loses power. And she was like, confused, like, oh, what's happening? Like, why is there no power? It's like, mother, get up. And mother's not responding because mother is recharging right now. So the child goes on to th through some hallways, just checking out and finds a cable that is uh, destroyed, damaged. Probably damage is better to say because it's not like completely severed, it's like a cut in it, if you will. Uh, and we hear some some noises, some rattling. Uh, rattling, it's actually a really good pun when you know what comes next. Uh, yeah, she, she hears some rattlings and she sees there's like a like a mouse or a rat uh, underneath. It's like, oh, you probably did that. So she gets like a flask of some sort, puts some food in there. And... Uh, Puts it down there, trying to capture the red while repairing the cable, getting the power back on, and then we just see her waiting for the red to go into the into the flask, and she captures it in there, and that makes her wonder. It's like, hmm, mother told me there's like a hazard a hazard outside. Like we can't go outside. Everything just dies when you when you go outside. So she shows after after the <clears throat> sorry after the the power is back on. Mother boots up and just goes to, uh, stands up and boots up immediately. It's like, oh, what happened? Uh, I, I, why didn't I get up earlier? It's like, oh, the power was out. I had to repair some stuff. But look at this. I found a, found a little rat. Like, you think it's from the outside? And I was like, that's highly unlikely. That can't be. 
but uh, did you did you touch it? He was like, no. Okay, we need to get rid of it because it's probably hazardous to you. Um, and that makes the child wonder, like, hmm, mother, maybe you're wrong. Maybe your calculations are not correct. Maybe there's no hazard outside anymore. And that claim is denied hard by mothers. Like, that's not true. Do, do, do you think I always uh, ever lied to you? Really aggressive, but then immediately t turns around to basically go like for emotional stuff. Like, do you feel don't you feel safe here? And just trying to calm her down. Uh, also, they burned a rat because it's hazardous. The child didn't like that, but yeah. So you see, she's very very careful, <coughs> very careful to not get her contaminated. Uh, yeah, mother, then just. I guess disinfects the whole fucking airlock <coughs> thingy uh, while the tra the daughter has to wait for her to finish. Oh yeah, that 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 obviously catches the child's attention, who's now very interested to find out if there's actually still a danger outside. So at one night, when mother is recharging again, <coughs> sorry, something in my throat. <coughs> Fuck now. Uh, she goes to the airlock again and puts on like a little little hazard suit, like a black one, uh, with a gas mask, doing a little little Mauler cosplay. I hope that wasn't offensive for you when they did that. Uh, uh, right, and she's about to open up the thing, but then she hears some some knocking on 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 the big door on the big airlock. She says, oh, "What's going on here?" She shines a little light out and sees there's a survivor outside. It's like, oh shit, what is, what is happening here? So she lets the survivor in uh, with the intention to help her. But when she opens up the second big door, an alarm goes off and that triggers the, the mother to immediately boot up. And you see mother just sprinting the shit to the airlock. Like it, That's like one of these parts where you, where you see the robot sprint and it looks it's like this creepy thing when you see a robot do human human motions and running it's like kind of freaks me out a little bit uh so yeah she lets in the survivor the survivor lady who is also wounded uh in the in the belly area much busier uh, and she goes to her and i think uh she just says oh you need to hide here i have to take care of mother because she's probably not gonna like that you're here she also tells her to put on the uh, another hazard suit that she put in in the in the lock, airlock between. <clears throat> so yeah, she 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 hides out in between the things, just out of sight. Uh, and she basically tells her mother, "Oh, I was just super curious. I opened it up for, just for a little bit. Uh, I closed it immediately. Uh, you were wrong. Uh, I was wrong. I didn't mean to uh, insult you." So yeah. Uh, let's see, ne right, the uh, mother's like, oh, you're awake anyway, so now you have to take your final exam, which she was being prepared for, basically is, uh, her whole life is the implication, because we see her t uh, taking classes and everything, so they go to like a little school classroom thingy, actually it's not small, it's like big, you can see multiple classrooms next to each other, and there's only her sitting there which uh, raises a little bit of an eyebrow, obviously. Um, yeah, well, she is supposed to take the final exam. Mother says, I have to do some lab work. Also, I have to check the airlock. So I'm the fuck out of here. You're on your own. And as soon as she's gone, the daughter leaves, gets some medical supplies, goes back to the airlock, opens, opens up the first door, which doesn't trigger an alarm. And helps the survivor. She gets her into what's the crematorium? Is that the right word? Crematorium? That sounds very well. Whatever charming. it is, it has a uh, furnace in it that you can destroy things in. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering if that's the right term in general because it sounds very German when I say it. So I wasn't wondering. No, crematoriums exist for yeah, other okay. countries and stuff. It's just that I'm not sure <laughs> if we would call that area that. Okay, I was just wondering if that term itself was correct because it sounds exactly like the German one. Just a little different pronunciation. Uh, but yeah, while, while Mother's doing that, she gives the survivor lady 
uh, the supplies like you have to take care of yourself I need to do need to take care of mother so she doesn't find you uh, in the meantime mother checks the airlock finds a leftover gas mask in there from the survivor so she just takes it puts it in a little zip bag and well has to go to the furnace where the where she hit the where the daughter hit the survivor god that's names would be nice for explanations <laughs> Uh right, so the mother takes the takes the gas mask in the little zip bag, puts it into the furnace, and obviously the survivor is freaked out because oh shit, there's a droid in here. Like what the hell is happening in here? She has she always has like a gun and everything, arms herself, and yeah, it doesn't take long, probably like maybe a couple of minutes before they get found out, and mother runs towards the survivor. The survivor tries to shoot her twice, I think. And just barely misses the the main CPU. Um, yeah, they get get they get the survivor to like a medical facility, and they try. They, they the daughter tells her that she needs treatment, and mother's like, "Yeah, you're right." And then mother tells <clears throat> tells the daughter to get out of the room. She locks the room, and. <laughs> When you're watching this movie, it's like, oh shit, what's, what's gonna happen next? She gets like a syringe, a mother gets a syringe and everything, closes the door behind the daughter, and she walks slowly towards her. Oh, you need to use this, otherwise you'll die. <laughs> like, in this really monotone <laughs> robot voice, and it's like, oh shit, she's gonna fuck her up. But no, she just. The survivor refuses because she doesn't trust droids at all. Like, okay, I'm gonna put this. Penicillin right here. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Maybe you reconsider when your organs start to fail and they just leave her alone. And it's like, oh, I didn't expect that to happen. But yeah, uh, Survivor gets worse fast. Uh, I think the daughter is just going through her stuff. Finds like the, <clears throat> finds a book where she, drew, where the Survivor drew faces in, which makes the daughter believe there's some survivors out there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, obviously the survivor gets worse. They have to treat her, but she survivor refuses treatment from the droid. So the child has to, or the the daughter has to do the uh, <clears throat> has to do the operation, which she was uh, taught by mother to do. So yeah, we get a little scene there. Uh, the survivor is so paranoid about droids. That she even refuses to go under. So she doesn't even get any medication. She just basically bites <laughs> bites her tongue. But she doesn't really. But in a metaphoric way. She bites the tongue until she passes out. And they remove... Oh, I should have probably mentioned. She had a bullet wound. I didn't even mention that. She had a bullet wound in her. And she basically told <clears throat> told the, chi uh, the daughter... Oh, the droids outside hit me. Uh, shot me. Uh, so yeah, they get the get the bullet out. Mother takes the bullet uh away. I don't know if we actually see that or if it's just implied that mother takes it away somewhere. I think she wanted. I think she mentioned she wanted to do something on that. Do you remember that, Mirfly? I'm not sure. What specifically? If, if if mother if we see mother taking away the bullet or if that just happens in between the scenes. Actually, it's not that important for this right now. So never mind. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, she uh, the survivor gets better. They have like a couple of scenes together where they talk about stuff, uh, mainly about the the book with the faces. Like, oh, is there survivors? And he's like, yeah, it was like a mine when we got there. But also, all the droids are really bad because they shot us all. <clears throat> they shot us all, and. I don't trust them. You shouldn't should come with uh, with me and get to the survivors because you're not safe here. While the daughter is telling her, "No, we should get get them all here because we have like all the supplies you need. It's like really good. We, we can get them all here. We have space for days. Just uh, just get them all here. Like it's a good time." Uh, right. So at some point we, yeah, after that that scene. The multiple scenes, mother's like, you still have your exam to finish. 
And it's like, oh, really now? There's like a survivor. It's like, oh, she's she's going to be fine. Uh, just go do the exam. You, you, you've prepared for this like for a year or so. <clears throat> so she does the exam, passes us in flying cars with like 98% or something. And that, that, that actually... Oh yeah, earlier we see that the um, that she gets like a little present every time she passes a test, and this time the present is to choose another embryo, a male one, to get a little brother. And it's like, oh, this is exciting. Like I, I'm finally not going to be the only human on the station. Uh, well, except the survivor, obviously now. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Then we see like uh, a little bonding moment between mother and daughter as well. And it's like, oh, we're going to get the embryo. And yeah, we basically get the same shot we have as a background here, but them standing in the embryo uh, I don't know, warehouse. I don't know what you want to call it, where she has like his, uh, her head on mother's shoulder. And it's like, yeah, we got a little brother. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me check real quick. Um... Right, so mother did some lab work at some point. I think uh, we get a scene in the evenings or nights or whatever, and mother basically tells tells the daughter, "Oh yeah, by the way, the survivor was lying to you. She was actually shot by another human with the same gun she took in here, so she cannot be trusted." Child obviously goes to confront the daughter. <clears throat> the child, the do <laughs> get confused with the fuck that. The daughter confronts the survivor. It's like, oh, why did you lie to me? Like, did you lie about all the all the survivors too? Why, why would you why would you say droids shot you when you got shot by another human? It's like, who told you that? It's like, mother told me. She checked the bullet, and the survivor basically just says, "Did you did you see the bullet? Like, it's bullshit." So yeah, we have like a little. Little trust issues on all the sides right now. Little, little nice little tension. Uh, but yeah, the child is so conflicted about everything that at night when mother recharges, she she gets a key to all the uh, to the things out of a, uh, I think out of a finger of one of her prosthetics from mother, and she checks the labs, and sees that she not only lied about that mother not only lied about the bullet being the same one out of the shotgun she uh, the survivor brought she also checks the embryo channels and you see there's actually three embryos missing already <clears throat> so it's like oh shit she is not actually the first one who got raised in here uh the prosthetics just lying around no we see we, we see her having uh doing some maintenance on it earlier mother and she that, that obviously it's just there after the maintenance but yeah, she checks that and says, oh shit, there's like three embryos missing. And the daughter also goes to check the furnace in the crematorium, or whatever it is at the end, and actually finds human remains. And that obviously distresses the, the daughter very much. Uh, so she decides to leave with the survivor. They have a little talk, it's like, yeah, it's just going to take a couple of hours back to, uh, to the mines. And we're going we're gonna to do it tomorrow. And she's like, no, we can't leave now because we need to get my brother out of here. We, we like basically, I guess we could tell, almost call it breeding a brother because they just put the embryo on a little device and it takes 24 hours to get it from embryo to, to baby. Uh... Yeah, on the next day when mother is <clears throat> back online, I guess she uh, she gets a bunch of stuff together and pretends like she's getting stuff for the brother. It's like, oh yeah, I just want to get the brother stuff together. I just want to hang out there if that's cool with you, mother. Uh, but yeah, they get they get found out, or she gets found out pretty quickly. Um, mother's trying to get rid of the survivor, but. At the end, they, they, they get away from her and they leave the leave the facility and they make their way to the mines, apparently. So we get like a little, <clears throat> get some time outside. So we see that there's like robots everywhere flying around and they, they're they're planting trees and, and 
bushes and all that good stuff. Everything that, that makes the air nice and clean. And we also get a little throwaway line from uh, from the Solaris. Like, yeah, they started doing that like a couple of months ago. Uh, they, they must be up to something or, so, or something along those lines. I didn't write down the exact quote. Uh, yeah, so they make the, we see them walk and walk and walk and walk, and they make their way to, I guess, to the ocean or something, and there's like a, a cargo ship that's stranded, and we see that the survivor lied about the mines. <laughs> she, she tells her, oh, yeah, the mines were flooded, like, long, long time ago, um, I only live in this container here, but we have plenty of food and stuff, so you can just live with me, isn't that great, I saved you. And the child is always the daughter is very upset about this. Like, hey, we left my brother there. Like, why did we? We have to go back. It's like, no, we can't do anything. We this time it's like the, it's the right thing to do. And after a little bit, a little back and forth, the ch uh, the daughter decides to go back to the facility, so she can. I think the intent at that point is just to save the brother and get it back. Maybe, if I remember correctly yeah she goes back uh, when she arrives at the, at the at the airlock there's like 50 droids up there she's just like i want to talk to mother and they they let her through and yeah they have like their final confrontation the the daughter <clears throat> prevents all the, the droids to get back in she takes like parts away from the door so it can't be opened with the normal hydraulics uh, and she arms herself with a fire axe, I think. Yeah, 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 with a fire axe. And she goes to confront Mother. They have a little back and forth where we see her holding the brother because the brother is, uh, I guess, done <laughs> at that point, for lack of a better term. Uh, but yeah, we get this confrontation. <clears throat> God damn it. Well, we get the confrontation... Where they talk about that mother is basically behind all of this. She's not only mother, she is like this uh, hive mind thingy. I don't know what you properly call it. I think hive mind is. Was hive mind right for AIs? Wasn't it a different term? Or am I blanking right she's, now? She's just widespread. She's the whole network. The whole network. Yeah, network is probably the better term. So yeah, she controls all. She controls the droids and everything. And yeah, basically the programming that was put in to her led her to make a better human race that is uh, more human than the humans before that. And that ultim ultimately the human race will flourish much more and much more will live that have been killed by this. Which is, bas uh, which is kinda, hmm, I don't know, kinda, kinda sus. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, at the end, the child basically convinces mother that she, that she can raise the rest of the embryos in this facility, because that's what she that's what she been that's what she's been raised for by mother. And basically, mother agrees, and we get a last a last scene with her where she wants to caress the caress. I never said that word out loud. Caress. Air... So caressing is like to. To touch someone carefully, yes, sort of thing. That's what I was going for. Uh huh. Uh, the little brother still showing like this this motherly touch, basically, and uh, that's that all happens while she's aiming the gun with the last bullet that was still in the facility at the CPU and shoots the mother, and yeah, that's that's the end of mother in this in in this facility. It's a really nice scene because because she's obviously still very upset. She has to shoot <clears throat> shoot mother because well, it's her mother. She doesn't know any anyone else. Uh, and then at the end, we get a short little scene with the survivor again, where we see a droid going into the container, talking to the survivor in mother's voice. It's like, huh? Isn't it weird how you have survived this whole time, and everyone else around you dies? It's almost someone had a purpose for you. But you, but it is done now, and we just see the container close, and I think that's the ending shot of the movie. There's one more where 
we see daughter is looking at the embryos and she has oh, that a was particular expression yeah but yeah that's that's the that's the summary of that really really neat uh especially on the uh, as, I, as i said before first time i was like oh this was neat but then yeah second second watch is where it's at um well since maybe we can now tag team yes i will now do um a summary go for it and uh since everyone's gotten the the basic storyline mm -hmm. we'll run through again and just i'm still not gonna i think we'll i'll try and run through it with a uh highlighting different things and then we can just talk about what it all means yeah, very much sure. potentially anyway sounds good to me so like the main actors of this story are mother daughter and woman they are the three main characters if you will mm -hmm. and we're we're in a world that's post-extinction from an extinction event and there's uh like human i guess repopulation sites presumably dotted around the world with uh ai controlling it and in you know responsible for relaunching humans after we've fucked everything up yep which um I think it's perfectly reasonable. We could even get to that point in our world for all we fucking know. This would be like the last sort of gasp for humanity. Um, just hang on to the embryos until the world is safe again or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Regardless, uh, you know, the film opens with the, the program's beginning. And it's just uh, the mother as an entity is this robot. And it's uh, it just does the robot version of everything we understand to be caring for a child. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, the montage is filled with all kinds of little things of, I think on a first watch through, you're just going to be like, hey, this, this, this cute playing with the kid running around, just going to sleep, yep. having the food it needs, playing with toys. Um, and as it gets old, older, and this was the scene that made me decide, I actually wanted to go to sleep when I was watching it because mm -hmm. I was tired. But as soon as they played the scene, the first, uh, the lesson that we get, uh, like in, in a school environment, I was like, all right, I'm watching the rest of this now. Yeah. It was, um, Mother's teaching daughter ethics, yeah. and um, she presents to her the issue that a lot of people extend out of the trolley problem, which is if you're a doctor, then you've got a guy on the table who's got the perfect organs to save five other patients who are set to die. Um, you could save the one and let him go, or you can chop him up and uh, save the other five. What are you doing? And um, daughter's, daughter's stuck with this one, um, and then she says, we don't know who out of the people like who are good humans and who are bad humans here um because mm -hmm. the utilitarian perspective is complicated when it comes to simply looking at every life being valued equally which is something that mother mentions and she's like don't you believe that and uh the door says i i did a month ago and you were teaching me can't um which i find super interesting to think about that you get like this streamlined look through all these different perspectives mm -hmm. uh but, uh, you know, first watch through again, you can just be like, this is a fun little example of how she's teaching her stuff. And this is probably how a lot of it went. But obviously this scene, I would argue, is fundamental to the entire film. So yeah, that happens. Mm -hmm. And then uh, she's just <clears throat> asking her some little questions. They want to start a big family. It's going to be great. It's uh... But of course, yeah, complications begin in that she's got a big final test coming. And she'll be having it very soon. Um, and, and this was something when I think I first watched it and this was highlighted by yourself and rags and stuff. It's just like, it's kind of silly that, um, this amazing robot has to go offline for like half a day at a time. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, phones when they're charging, they don't have to be off. So it's, it's like, and, and when I was first watching, I just figured like, this is the only way they can tell this story. Presumably is by giving this arbitrary restriction to the robot. So, you know, we'll see how they do with it. And so with the robot being off and the power going down, it's just a matter of figuring out, oh, a bit of life, a little rat, which is cute for someone who's never basically seen any life in this facility. And uh, Mother kills it Im immediately, yeah. warning of the, the horrible extinction level event outside. This, I think she argues it's like an infection, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, when I was first watching this... <clears throat> I was like, that rat came from outside, and she's like, it might be a carrier. It's like, we're not really doing anything to solve that, are we? We're just like, well, hope it wasn't, Ben. It's mm -hmm. like, well, do, don't the tests need to be done? Do... Okay. And she just quarantines off the area, and it's like, all right, fine. And then um, I guess the curiosity of that gets her looking again, and that's when she hears noises outside of the 
the big gates. Um, and I guess the sympathy of just having someone outside who is also not infected, uh, or at least not dying uh, mm -hmm. from infection. It's just enough that uh, she cares. She cares enough to get her in. She's been taught to value human life at this point, so of course she does. And yeah. getting her in is complicated because she's pretty sure that Mother would likely do to her what she did to the the mouse. There would be no reason not to because she's a big old robot. Yep. And um, what's interesting when we first meet Woman <clears throat> is that like mentioning Mother as an entity for her is like really bizarre and then like she only experiences her at first through hearing her footsteps and knowing yeah. that the daughter's afraid of her and then um you know when when they she tells her like how are you how are you alive because the infection a woman is just like who the fuck told you this yeah and uh it was funny i think because we watched it with rags i think he was just like there's no infection eh, you were lied to because eh, it's like <laughs> Yeah, of course, because that's kind of like a um, tropey, I guess, in these kind of sci-fi movies where you're not allowed out of a place. But it turns out, was there even a danger outside of the place? Oh, my God. No. And so you just be wondering why, it, what, you know, all the questions are being asked at this point. Um, And then when she realizes that Mother is what she calls a dozer. Yeah. Is a do dozers are the ones that did to her, like, the bullet wound. So she's, like, terrified of Mother. And, you know, when, once... Um, she realizes that's going on and she gets her gun back. There is that that moment, and it's really important to note that Mother, when she's running at her, she puts her arm in the way of the shot that would have hit her CBU. Oh, and that's really? why it, the bullet ends up in her hand, and that's why she has to disconnect the hand. And later... I didn't even and catch I it on it, my second uh, watch, though. <laughs> yeah, if you go back to when the second shot is about to happen, that's... just go frame by frame. If you've got VLC, you can hit E to go frame by frame. Yeah, but, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, it's, uh, I'm having it on screen. So, she then, and I thought it was shitty writing again when I first watched it, when she's like, daughter, had she hit me here in my CPU, I would be gone. And I was thinking to myself, like, why would you tell anyone that? And then why wouldn't it be armored? You know, it's like okay, fine. Um, but anyway, obviously, like the it's just there's all this p these pieces of information in your head just oh, yeah, floating they... around. Oh yeah, there you go. It's like right in the middle. Of... Oh yeah. Oh neat. She said to her, if she had aimed just a little bit to the left or whatever, that she would have gotten me. It's like no, she wouldn't have. Your hand is in the way. It's very yeah. deliberate. Mother did this on purpose. Um, yeah. So yeah, she's the uh, mother is very creepy. And uh, she seems to hesitate here and there <clears throat> in regards to talking to different people at different times. It's fascinating to think about once you understand her fully her motivations. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she, this film teeters on a horror movie every once in a while it with really Mother being like a slasher type character, but then it bounces back to Mother as a caring robot and this woman cannot be trusted. Um, and it's really just a matter of, as, as a viewer, when you're first going through it, it can be complex to really figure out exactly whether or not you, you agree with one side or the other. Mm. Because, of course, Mother tries to help her, and she takes her penicillin too late, and so it's only causing pain at this point because it's not fixing anything. Yeah. And at that point, as a viewer, they're, they're challenging you to think, was what she took bad for her or good for her, and she took it too late? Like, those are the two options here, because it's Mother's word against uh, the survivor, the woman. Yeah, and so that only gets solved by daughter offering that she'll do the surgery and she won't do it with anesthetic. And so trust starts getting gained and mother does feel awkward about that. And then she tells daughter that she can't, because they talk to each other after the surgery, they they connect, they bond over like uh, clips of, I think it's Johnny Carson's show, because mm -hmm. they've got that on like archive. And so uh, mother doesn't like that. And so mother tells her she's been lying to you that obviously as Mel mentioned the the gunshot is from survivors droids don't use these kinds of weapons and um that puts the viewer in a position of just like just tell me who's the nice one yeah. I, uh, <laughs> it's, I, I like um, it because the back and forth uh, is like really well made because the, the the survivor yeah. always reacts so aggressively like even when when she asks like did you see that she the, the, that that is the same bullet than mine like the first time I watched it, I wrote that down. It's like, man, she's really aggressive about this. She's probably lying. Like she's evil. But... Yeah, but in reality, it's that she's had a horrific fucking life and she's defensive as hell, which she would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, she doesn't believe that Mother is separated from the droids outside. Uh, mm -hmm. But Mother argues that she absolutely is. That those droids are different, and that we don't trust them. Trust me. And and Mother says like, have I done anything to hurt you in your entire life? And of course, the answer is no. Mm. 
Um, and so that point in the film, yeah, you're just forced to sort of think about that. Now the bullet is still lodged in Mother's hand, so she removes that hand and replaces it with a new one. Um, as for the comment in chat, I would actually consider that a partial contrivance that she would leave it out. But yeah, how long will that remain a contrivance? The more we talk about this film, oh, um, uh oh. So the yeah, so the, there's a lot of things that have been set in place now, and then woman just says like the bullet thing. That's bullshit, right? Like you checked it, you'd know. Mm. And so yeah, the one night she does a lot of Sherlocking and discovers not only the bullets different uh, sizes, so it couldn't possibly be what mother said it was. As you mentioned, embryos are missing, and mother's never mentioned anything about that. Yep. Uh, so that's kind of terrifying. It's it's nice because I I, I saw because we get the scene where she uh, where mother shows the daughter the uh, the whole facility uh, part of it. Actually, I think that's the the child part still. That's before she she's grown mm -hmm. up, and she shows deliberately only the male parts. Like if, if at that point she would open up the same then in the. <coughs> In the in the beginning, it's like, oh shit, there's some missing. But this one is like, look, there's all of them are there. Like you're the first one. Like, it's mm -hmm. very deliberate uh, in what she shows, what mother shows the daughter. And yeah, that lie plus the embryo thing, basically, just we're at this point in the film where like mother's evil, and you got to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Um, but the film isn't done playing with you because uh, mother anticipates this, quote unquote. And uh, oh, there's so many good things in this. Hopefully, we'll get to all the details without forgetting them. But um, yeah. So, she, so mother's obviously just like traps daughter in a room and goes to the medical facility, and she's much more aggressive. The natural indication from any viewer would be she's going to kill woman. Yeah. Um, and they have a conversation that's not exactly reassuring. And uh, during it, um, mother passes her her bag which is the most important detail to me in terms of figuring out what was going to happen in that scene had woman not jumped on her back and started separating different like links and pipes and stuff in, in cables, whatever, as a part of Mother as a robot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But during that, daughter manages to set off a fire alarm and break out through uh, using the liquid nitrogen that's a part of the, the facilities. Uh, I, I forget, that that's like a, um, the repair center or something. I, uh, it's like tools and security is all there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so mother distracted by that leaves and, um, we get something that I was surprised you didn't go into a little bit more detail on, but we can do it this time. Yeah. The doors won't open without mother's permission. And so we're at a standstill and mother just says, don't trust this lady. She's going to fucking screw you up. She only cares about herself. Mm -hmm. And, um, at this point in the storyline, you'd just be like, well, how do they win now? Like the door can't open. Mother's there. It's over. And so woman grabs daughter and threatens to kill her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with a shiv. And like that's one of my favorite scenes for just watching what they do with the robot in terms of what try they're trying to translate to us because she's got ever so subtle hesitations in the way she's looking, mm -hmm. um, and mother lets them go. And the problem with that for a viewer is, wait, mother didn't have to do that, right? Like she like does it? Have we gotten this all wrong? Like has mother done some stuff? And this is I think at the point in the film. Springy was like, you know, those other embryos, we have no idea what happened to them. What if they were defective? What if they had, like, some kind of terminal disease? Like, why would, you know, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And everything Mother has done, like, it can be contextualized to benefit this area. And so, like, I don't know. And and, and this woman is literally like, I'm going to kill this girl if you don't let me out. Which, in terms of ethics, you know, you, you again, you start to wonder, I don't... uh Hmm. Yeah, she's still is she still the good one. Like I don't know, she seems pretty selfish. Just seems to just want to get out of there, because she doesn't really care about the brother as well. I think that's pretty clear. It's like, oh, we can get him later, no problem. It's like, mm, can we though? But obviously, Wait, so the, someone the child... said I get the point, Mola. I haven't even made a point yet, so. Oh no, there <laughs> wasn't. Sure there, there wasn't reference to the multiple rep uh, repopulation sites. I think. Was it? Well, that's the the other thing he he posted. Before. Oh, that's just me describing events. So it's not really. I'm not yeah. making a point yet. Um, this will be relevant much later. Yeah, yeah. Just, just just getting everything clear. But yeah, when they go out there, it's kind of desolate, which sucks. Uh, yeah. Except for these, just very almost out of place, like farmed lands. 
and uh, she said, the woman says, you know, these these things have been here recently. The air was barely breathable about she say six months ago, something like that. Yeah, something along those lines. I have the thing. Yeah, you can see it on screen now. Like this is what 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 they're doing right now. The robots. And yeah, so it's um, <clears throat> dealing with as a viewer, you're just sort of. Uh, curious what they're going to be in the caves and his mother going to be able to find them. Mm -hmm. And a, a ship actually uh, spots them, or at least is floating so close to them above them in an open field that there's no fucking way they weren't spotted. Yeah. And um, I think once again, I was like, okay, they escaped because they went into the cord, I guess. And I'm pretty sure Rags or even you and Rags were like, I'm um, pretty sure, yeah, they were definitely found. Like, there's no way they were avoiding yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but no, they, they, they escape it. Very lucky. And they, uh, they make their way to the mines. It turns out the mines aren't a real thing. Everybody has died, and there's just some shipment containers that she's living in. Yep. And that's what she presents to daughters, that, you know, we can survive, and that's good enough. Like, yeah, I may have lied, but, like, it wasn't good in there, and Mother's horrible. Like, this is just, this is for the best. Um, and... Uh, daughter gets visited by the little dog that, that she has, and makes the little origami of it, and, and commits to the decision of going back for the brother. Mm -hmm. And uh, that fast-forwarding puts us into what I consider to be a very s sort of bog-standard spooky ending with your robot that's gone rogue in terms of aesthetic and surface. Uh, yeah. Before leaving, woman sabotaged uh, the charging seat for mother, mm -hmm. as well as just fucking with the cables, and so all the lighting in the area hasn't been repaired yet, and so they're flickering, and um, that 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 naturally gives you your your spooky environment. Yeah, also I really like this shot with all the droids in front of it, because from when she comes back, there's like a fuck ton of droids in front. You just see laser pointers. Yeah, true. Um, all of the dozers, the the terrifying. Um, basically just are, are at mother's will so it's now we're like hmm what is what is the grand picture exactly yeah and yeah uh mother's just like join back with us brother will be brought up it'll be great and uh obviously at this point we think mother's super evil so mm -hmm. daughter just wants to get brother out of there and leave and um she she proposes a deal to mother based on what she knows mother's purpose is, which is explained and and obviously the uh, the logic, the the ushering in the of of the human race uh, as a protocol would would have uh, intermingled with protocols of whatever safety and security she represented anyway. And she realized that humans need to be reset, that we um as a species are only destroying ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so if we can, regrow humans um we can we can take more care and as you mentioned the quote um more will flourish than we're ever killed yeah is basically mother's logic um and so she says well you know my purpose is to be a mother right like a daughter so she's like so let me try and mother's like no no you know we, we'll do it together we'll look after each other blah, blah, blah. and she's like no you go away this is what i'm for mm you got to at least give me a chance. And so then, you know, after an extended bit of thinking, um, mother puts herself in a position where daughter can shoot her CPU. And uh, she's done so. And so, like, to a degree, the film's already ending there, especially because uh, there was a panic and a ticking clock, if you will, because uh, all of the dozers outside were breaking in. Oh, yeah. I mean... uh, the implication being mother was panicked as to whether or not the correct thing was going to happen here. Uh, and it also pressures daughter to believe this is a very high stakes situation. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And so, and so like the film is, that's kind of, it's complete, but then we get that other scene, uh, with the container and woman getting what we presume is executed by mother. Uh, which almost seems like a little bit out of place compared to everything else. And then the final shot being daughter, like, looking determined and uh, almost ruthless yeah. in terms of how she's going to be bringing up these embryos. And, and the film ends. And so, like I said, the first time through, I was like, that was a fine sci-fi movie, I guess. 
AI is supposed to control humans goes nuts, and then through a loophole in her own logic, she's maybe not tricked, but you know, convinced to to go the fuck away and let this girl carry on, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um unlike this there would be plenty to compliment even with that sort of uh, approach. But then but I, I I don't know. I, I felt like something was incomplete about it. Yeah. Um combined with a lot of the flaws I was trying to highlight in, in how we were covering that. And uh, this, the scene with the shipment container and, and woman just wasn't quite sitting well with me because obviously the lines are very overt. And I was just like, I guess she wanted woman to do a couple of these things. Um, and I was like, why exactly? And I was just trying to think about it. And then eventually just a uh, good old epiphany happened. <gasps> good God. Um, which means for the third time, we will have to reset. <laughs> so... Again? God damn. When this film starts up, yep. uh, there's something that a lot of people catch. I certainly caught it, but I ignored it and wrote it off as a, just a fuck-up, which was the timeline. They tell you that we're at zero population, and then we watch a girl being brought up, and then it says, is it 13,000 days or 17,000? I don't have a time limit, but I wrote it down. Uh, it is 13,867 days. Which, Which anybody who knows 30, maths... It's 38 years. Yeah, our main character is not 38 years old. So I, like, when I saw that, I was just like, okay, that's embarrassing, but that's fine. <laughs> I'll yeah. just keep moving. Um, but when you rewatch it, you're like, oh, that's on purpose, because that is likely accurate to exactly how old she would be after the first two embryos failed. Mm -hmm. And then it's like... Um, you watch that intro, and you'll notice the the girls being played with by mother have different hair colors. Yep. In the scenes that go by, and it's very quick. But uh, the point is that we were seeing a montage of all three of them being brought up. Exactly. And uh, if two was uh, the one that failed the tests and thus was burned in the uh, furnace, where was one? And this is the the first sort of revelation on the on the train of revelations for this film. Mm -hmm. Apex One was woman. She was handcrafted by mother specifically to do everything she does in the film, without her realizing. Yeah. And so, with that information, it recontextualizes everything, and you have to start thinking about how everything works again. Because what purpose did woman serve exactly, and how much could it be controlled by mother? Um complicated and then you think about what mother says which uh seems obvious in retrospect when she tr threatens to kill mother mother says to her like do you really think like this unit this entity is me it's like i am well beyond this machine which yeah. i think if you're particularly immersed you might forget that for a moment like mother is this robot and i think they do that very deliberately to make you think mother is contained within this one dozer Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, Mother's all of it. She's everywhere. She's an AI. This is just a, a you know, an extension. Yeah, this is one of the vessels she uses. And so, with that in mind, she has eyes and ears everywhere all the time. There all would never the be a shut-off time for Mother. The, the unit itself might need charge, but that changes nothing about Mother's awareness. Yeah. And so how does the film look thinking that Mother is constantly aware of everything that's happening. And it's like, hmm. Well, there's a lot of things that happen that Mother didn't want to happen, right? And it's like, first of all, that mouse. You know, yeah. she didn't want that to happen. And it's like, well... <laughs> Not sure about that. So if her first lesson to... Well, rather, the lesson we saw was to value life, basically, in number alone... Because context in our society requires that it can't simply be that. But if that's what Mother's logic was, that all lives are worth one, you know, util or whatever, and so five is better than one, but there is a problem of good people versus bad people. Like, is one good person worth five bad people? It's like, typically, we probably vote no, or a lot of people might side that way, depending on how you look at life. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the mouse was actually a test to see what daughter thought of life and as I think Mother would have preferred, Daughter protests significantly at the mouse being killed. Mm -hmm. um, and it also instills a, just, a, just a twinge of mistrust, which is like, is that beneficial for Mother? It's like, well, let's just keep it in mind. 
then we move on to woman being introduced and like i said just uh, the floor okay. of i actually have like a little uh little thing uh when when she brings the power back in quotations you, they you get a shot of the little screen on her on her chest and when it boots up it starts at like 72 percent i wonder if that was deliberate that there's actually there was there was stuff happening while it was quote-unquote shut off like there's still things being processed. Maybe you could also interpret it as just it wasn't completely recharged because of the power down. No, no, the CPU power specifically. It shows the CPU power, not the not the charge. Like the processing power that's been used. Um, is this after the mouse part? Yeah, it's when when she gets booted back up. Quote unquote booted back up when we. It's like right after. Oh, are you she... suggesting that she is at sixty-six percent of her capacity as an AI? Yeah, not that she was actually doing stuff with this vessel while she, it was "quote unquote" shut off, but not really shut off. It was actually doing stuff, but it was in, I don't know, lights off mode. I guess. I th you might be able to call it that. I don't know. Looking at the shot myself, I don't know that you you couldn't argue that that number simply represents battery power and that it's near the cpu because there's two cpu symbols there but it's fine um i think I, you could argue that that's that i just caught that i found that interesting i was just wanted to mention it <laughs> yeah no uh, i because we are aware she's constantly she's running all of earth this is just a tiny project yeah, that she's yeah. got um so yeah with woman um there's no way that she should be able to open any of those blast doors without mother's express permission as well as loads of like checks whatever mm -hmm. but she can and so at first i was like well that's dumb but then i was like mother wants that though um so m mother allows it to happen technically speaking and then pretends to not necessarily want it to happen i think that's what we start to to realize here because she says, like, you've opened the main access door to the outside, and she says, oh, yeah, but I had the, the this door closed, so it's totally fine. I just wanted to, you know, just check some, want to see something. The first thing any normal fucking robot would do is be, like, scan that area. Yeah. But she's like, oh, I'll do that after. Yeah, I'll, let's that's go. That's I'll do after. Let's go take your exam. I'll go to the lab and then to the airlock. <laughs> because... Otherwise, woman wouldn't have a chance to be let in. Yeah. Uh, without... It's, it would raise too much suspicion if mother was aware of woman and then let her in we would it doesn't match what daughter perceives as mother's motivations yeah so mother's got to give her an opportunity to get her into the facility without looking like she is okay. um and so she does and uh i i imagine she knows everything that's happening in this place she probably has cameras everywhere that are high tech she probably is watching everything unfold just being very careful about moving it you know chess wise um, and that's what I, I think the, the, the gunshot plays in the mother wanted to be shot in the hand mm -hmm. so that she can then take it off and leave it quote unquote, so that daughter has an access key to lots of things to gain more mistrust of, of mother, which, um, she wants her to consider that that's the option so that she gives her reason to try and leave this facility. Uh, that is what I think mother is trying to do in this whole yeah. storyline um but she also wants to show daughter the result of being a human on the outside and what kind of personality you deal with mm -hmm. um she a lot of her dialogue in relation to woman relates to how self-centered she is how selfish every action she takes is and how it's just it results in complete catastrophe um and so, yeah, uh, I guess to skip forward, because we've already kind of gone over a lot of the smaller bits, but mm. Mother's very dodgy. She's just being nice and nice and careful. And then when, when we get to the... Because, like, uh, Daughter does the test and she aces it. Yeah. Um, which is also good news for Mother. Yeah. And uh, which starting is up... Which interesting as well, because all the way in the beginning, when we when, when she's still a child, the daughter... We have, a, we have some a little dialogue with the smaller child. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Why did you only make one if humans can't, can be beautiful? Because they have like this little conversation. And then the robot says, 
mothers need time to learn raising a good child and the child asks will you be ready soon and mother just says perhaps fully aware she's she only knows until someone aces that test or she aces that test it's like oh. yeah and still the i guess we'll get to that so yeah the you know discovering that mother's lied to her fully and that she's been burning failures uh, she's got all the reason she needs to try and leave yeah and so mother way. again has to facilitate her leaving quote unquote and if you watch some of the decisions mother makes in this scene like <clears throat> She's got. She's put her. She's trapped her in a room with full capacity to escape it, mm -hmm. and um, a fire alarm going off. As much as that is important, mother probably knows there isn't actually a fire. Yeah. But she'll use it as an excuse to give them an opportunity to leave. And if you look, it don't. I don't think she was going to kill woman. It looked like she was going to ask her to get the fuck out. Yeah, because she gives her the bag, as you mentioned earlier. It's like, yeah, which is. Go out, but, but the way they film it and from woman's pov it feels like she's gonna kill her yeah and woman was prepared for danger because she made a shift out of some metal parts i think or some yeah or whatever it was she um was attacks mother like a maniac <laughs> and one of the things just wonderful little detail is there is a quick scene while the test is running i think where mother's looking at her uh, book and she cycles the pages until she finds one of what looks like a person's head on a robotic body. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember you mentioned that to me. It's just, it oh. seems so indicative of an early memory woman would have, very likely, is some confusion as to who her mother is. Yeah, do you have a timestamp? Because her mother like is mother. Do you maybe have a timestamp? I'd like to show it on screen. Oh, wait, I think... Oh, shit, I just fucking clicked on it by accident. Nice. Never mind. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I can see there's like some robot -y parts. And the fact that Mother's looking at that is very interesting to think about. Uh, and yeah, so, and then of course the, the, the desperation, Mother's put all the pieces in place so that woman will threaten to kill daughter to get out. Yeah. Uh, and she allows her to. And then she sees the world and you, you're like, oh, what about that ship that spotted them then? It's like, it's likely Mother was watching them the whole time. Yeah, she knows exactly where all of them are and what they're doing, but it doesn't matter. She wants them to feel as though they're escaping. Uh, you know, feel like they got lucky and stuff. Um, but brother was very deliberate as well. Mother has set up a choice for daughter. Will mm -hmm. she, out of the desperation to make sure to <clears throat> cherish life, come back to try and save the brother, or will she strike out on her own and take care of herself? Yeah. What I found that interesting is... when they when they did it, mother told the daughter, "There's no wrong answer here." It's like, oh, so yeah, it's not about which embryo; it's just about we, that we have that embryo, so she has the choice. Yeah, um, and so this conversation they have in the finale, it's it comes across when you first watch it as daughter desperately trying to to convince mother to shut down, and she wins. In reality, it was just mother puppeteering everything the whole time and finally putting daughter in position to commit to being mother of, like, humanity 2.0. Yeah. By orchestrating a lot of situations that convinced daughter that humans were kind of shit. They lied, they cheated, they stole, they killed each other, and they only care about themselves. Um, and you should stay here and look after the, the these people being the embryos and start a new life and a new family mm -hmm. uh, with the matriarch being have, having been trained specifically to have a core value of human life first um, and that your life is not more important than the next one necessarily uh, that's something she actually says in uh, in that lesson about giving up your life potentially for the sake of the five yeah. as the doctor because she says a second scenario is that you are the patient would you give up your life to save the five? Mm -hmm. The problem, as stated by daughter, is the uncertainty of human nature being that if these people are all evil, why sacrifice a good for an evil? But depending on how they are raised, what if we could algorithmically make it so that all humans are good? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> does that then eliminate that problem? And it would seem, thinking about that, that that was woman... Uh, mother's goal 
and that's why she created woman to represent the failings of humanity and what happens when you only care about yourself yeah uh, to give daughter the final push through a real um event and that explains fully the uh do you remember your mother yeah to her in the container obviously being the mother is woman's mother yeah well, we also get a line that uh in i think a conversation between daughter and survivor uh where survivor mentions yeah I've, I've been picked up by these two and she shows like a picture of two of the survivors that were still alive at some point yeah they mm -hmm. raised me i was an orphan child they found me as a baby it's like oh okay founder is a baby yeah and yeah so she's got no use for woman so it kills her and then likely stays outside and terraforms while farming for the sake of all of the projects all around the earth of generating a new humanity that will be uh, much more productive and caring and less self-centered is his mother's goal yeah and so when you sort of piece all of that together mother is a fucking genius yeah. and one in every way she could possibly want through being a highly advanced AI. Uh, but she made it seem as though she didn't throughout the whole film almost. Yeah. Just, and so thinking about all of that, it started to really raise in terms of my perspective of this film. I was like, damn, yeah, that's also, way better than I thought it was. It also recontextualizes so much dialogue in, in the whole movie yeah especially just conversations between daughter and mother there's so many things when you know this and you hear it is like oh fuck <laughs> like the first thing that comes to mind is when they when she mentions the birthday is rapidly approaching yeah it's like wait i think up to yeah i have it here your birthday is rapidly approaching and it would be a shame if your scores fail to meet the projections from last year's examination and you're like oh fuck <laughs> yeah and then she says like it wouldn't be an indication of your incompetence, but mine. Yeah, this is more a test to me than it is to you. So, uh, mother is desperate to uh, complete her task, which I find is a really interesting twist on what we usually get from bad AI. I thought it was simpler when I first thought about it, that it mm. was save humanity or protect them. I will kill them all to do so. It's like Ultron, where you're like, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> I will replace the world with robots. Fuck off, Ultron. No Let's one likes go away, you. Ultron. <laughs> Mother was given two big protocols. One is to help save, protect, and nurture humanity at all costs. Simultaneously repopulate humanity. Um, and those two got crossed over into, I can redesign humanity. To make them better. Um, yeah. Yeah, she specifically says, I'm going to improve my creator, Yeah, which more. is a really fucking cool idea to think about. Um, I think a very specific... Something that stands out to some people in this film is, why was there a dog? Why did the dog randomly show up? What was the purpose for the dog? Yeah. And um, not only have we got just a, maybe an argument for how a woman didn't lose her mind by having a pet, but dogs are probably the prime example of humans just genetically engineering them as they wish uh, to turn them into something that they believe is better. We have bred dogs to be exactly what we want, and that's what Mother's doing to humans. Yeah. It's a really uh, cool... And they, they have the origami dog, which I just think is a reference to Blade Runner, which feels suitable. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Um... And yeah, so those protocols getting crossed over means that Mother started a war and she wiped out humanity <laughs> in the way that you would likely do so with, like, if you were building some kind of house of cards and it was all falling apart, you just wipe the table and start again, mm. but very deliberately this time. And as much as that sounds horrific, it's like, to her, it's not at all, because she views it all as, it's all part you of the, know... Part of the programming. Well, yeah, one human is no better than another human if we get them all to perfection. Yeah. And so if I just wipe out all of the shitty ones and the good ones and a couple of perfect ones and then just generate loads of perfect ones and I build a world that's ready for them to thrive in, I will have completed my protocols. Yeah. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> and so like when you understand that, the movie goes from being this small little sci-fi idea that's kind of neat with some stuff in it that's, that's kind of okay, blah, 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 um, to what I think is like possibly one of my favorite ideas executed in a small scale. Yeah. Um, 
as as far as AI going bad, I really like this idea. Um, because it's it's complicated. Because you you wonder what would we say if the result was a thriving ten billion population of only people who care about each other and take good care of the planet and themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like would it have, would would it have been worth it? That's a that's a whole whole debate in itself. <laughs> yeah, it's and really so I think we're supposed to assume that uh, this is one of possibly hundreds of thousands of facilities, and Mother is running this experiment everywhere, learning constantly. Yeah. And until, uh, so the end where she says, just give me a chance, and Mother allows her to shoot her, I'd consider it symbolic. Mother is separating that umbilical cord, if you will. You have to be the mother now, mm -hmm. and Mother's going to be watching. If she fails as a parent, I imagine Mother will kill her. Yeah, because the the last line they they share with their others, if you ever need to find me, Dodge just says, I won't. Like you, Yeah, I which is important. Won't need to find you. And it says, goodbye, daughter, and then... Get shot. It's like, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And that's what I think explains daughter's uh, facial expression right at the end. She's determined because she knows everything rides on this. She's yeah, gonna be. She fucks up. It's the end for her. <laughs> but she's ready, and she's been she's born and bred specifically for this task, so she's gonna do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's good. Good stuff. There's. So many layers to this that made me enjoy it so much more, and I think that is a problem for the film. A lot of people don't like it, but don't even talk about all of this stuff. Yeah, that's actually what a thing I wanted to mention. It was like maybe there's too much stuff in this, so a lot of people don't really catch that all that stuff. Because I would, if if you would have showed me this and then talked about us after, I would have never looked at that movie again. It's like yeah, it was kind of neat, but I don't think I'm gonna watch it again. And then you, we watching it, then talking about it after, and now me doing this little movie thingy here. Uh, it's like this is perfect to just talk about because I feel like not a lot of people are actually talking about this movie because most of the people oh. pretty much just missed all the things in the movie. I think it's safe to say because uh, uh, for reference, I got into a call with you, Rags, and As, and yeah. uh, let's just say when I finished watching it with Fringy, he was pretty much in love with it and we just talked for a while about all the things in it and um, there was a couple of things he missed i just filled in blanks because obviously i'd seen it twice at that point mm -hmm. but with you guys i got a distinct impression you weren't happy the three of you with this film um you were probably the most positive about it but rags and as was certainly like meh <laughs> yeah and i was like oh no and then i spoke for like i think 40 minutes and i was like now what do you think and rags was like yeah i mean yeah it's phenomenal i guess <laughs> i guess <laughs> i wasn't made this like i need to rewatch it now I need to, need to rewatch it at some point, and then we do. Yeah, now we're here, and I think it's very, very good movie. I yeah, I just think it's incredibly tightly written. Um, yeah. when it almost wasn't it, like seriously, it would have been down at like a five or a six, but then recontextualizing some stuff by using all the little things they give you, all the little details, it skyrockets back up because all of it was deliberate. Yeah, from it's... mother as a character. Uh, I was very impressed, and I just, I really, uh, I really like Mother as a character. Oh, yeah. Uh, love listening to her dialogue. I love the dialogue throughout the film, to be fair. I feel like everybody really does act in favor of their motivations, and um, it's uh, so low budget, and they manage to make so much use of that. Outside of a bit of wonky uh, compositing in the outside world, that's the part that, like I would say, shows the budget. Mm -hmm. Um but other than that, this small-scale sci-fi. And I do have a soft spot for humans and robots just uh, working together in any way, but then also just uh, mystery and then a horror element. And um, sci-fi. Sci-fi is the perfect breeding ground for thinking about stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think they did an excellent job. I fully recommend the movie. I'm considering making a video on it one day. I thought so. <laughs> I got too many fucking videos to make, so... You, you do. <laughs> yeah, it's really, so. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> Good writing. Finding a unicorn is way harder. Easier. Damn, I ruined the joke. <laughs> well, it, was, it was what was so cool about it. I just saw the, it, it, the exact way it's supposed to work. I saw its poster and was like that is an interesting poster considering the name read the synopsis that's an interesting synopsis i'd like to see the first 10 minutes 
watch the first 10 minutes. It's like, I would like to see the rest of the film now. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's a film I regard pretty highly, so. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and I, I, I understand the funnies that if only I'd seen this earlier and I released a, pra a praise for father and I am mother back to back. <laughs> oh, man, two praises? I don't think people could handle that. So it would definitely be a movie that I know I'd have fun making a video for because I I really do like uh, X Market has a similar thing where you just you look at it one way and then you look at it another way and suddenly a whole new film is unlocked. Yeah, that's that's a movie I want to talk about on here as well. Should be a fun one. It's on my my little list of movies I want to want to to grab. Uh, I know Rags and Springy both love it, so I already asked Springy to talk about Twelve Angry Men with me. <laughs> You go for the toxic masculinity film, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um. So yeah, now what? <laughs> uh, the performances a... are top notch. I like the soundtrack. Oh yeah, the... absolutely. Plenty of great cinematography in here. Obviously, the shot metal's got there is basically my favorite one from the film. Yeah, I really like um, that shot too. That's why I <laughs> took that one for the background. It's really nice. If you. Uh, if just like a second later, I think Mother tilts her head down to her as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Though it is a bit, it's a bit awful on rewatch because I'm pretty sure that is uh, Apex Two right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing. Just yeah. rethink about about how it all works. That's like all and, these uh, shots in in hindsight, like 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 this one. It's like, oh, look at all these empty beds. Like, huh. <laughs> Why is there only one being being raised right now? There's a couple of shots like this. The classroom well, yeah, where um, you can see a fuck ton of seats and tables and rooms. And all there are genuinely some basic questions you can ask as you're going through it that if someone knows exactly what's happening in this film, I could see them just being like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, what do you mean? You're like, yeah, you're pointing out these things. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I don't get it. But yeah, uh, just, just an automatic question. Why would Mother raise them one at a time? And it's just because she's building the perfect human. She's learning how to do it. It's not because she's simply repopulating humans, which is already a significant bit of information to think about. Yeah. Uh, also, like, at the end, I think... I mean, Rex also mentioned it when we were watching. It's like, how does it work? There's no way they're going to be able to repopulate Earth if there's only this one facility with one person being raised at a time. Like, what the fuck is the point of, point of that? And then at the end, it's like, oh, shit, that's like the first one to see if this procedure works. Well, the fact is, we don't know. Uh, we know this is the UNU HWK repopulation facility. So she could be at seven in another one or th or one. You know, she's just uh, necessarily experimenting throughout Earth, gaining all the information she needs to create the perfect environment to bring up the human that will be most important for mothering a, a new humanity. Mm -hmm. Oh, I found. Ram has just found the shot where it says days since extinction event 13,867 I didn't even give yeah, that any thought I just saw it's like oh yeah this number well, okay <laughs> and Rags, Rags highlights something when we talked to him and I think it's really fair um, I kind of did the same thing I see that and like I told you guys I went lol what a flub moving on instead of good faith which is hmm why? what could possibly explain that and Rags was saying and I agree with this We've watched so much shit yeah. that I'm like, I'm just used to like, well, that's a mistake, that's a moving mistake. on, that's a mistake, moving on. Um, And so it can be hard sometimes to realize like, oh, fuck, that was actually, oh, God, it's all a part of a thing. It's okay. a very, very big hint in the beginning of the movie, and you're just like, oh, number. Because I didn't even think about the number, I just saw, oh, okay, that's how many days, okay, whatever. I didn't I didn't think about it at all, not in the it reminds bad me of movie, how, like... whatever, it's just like, yeah, it's numbers, I get it. Because I'm 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 used to this formula where it says, Oh, humans zero, day since extinction that many. I just saw it's like, yeah, that's the thing they do, whatever. I didn't even think about it at all. Not yeah, and not realizing that's a big fucking hint right in my face. Yeah, because if I, I'm I'd be interested to know if there was anyone out there who saw thirteen thousand eight hundred sixty seven and then it pans down to her and they go, Oh, so she's not the first one. Okay. But for, like, I immediately just interpreted it as a mistake. Yeah. 
it's super interesting to think about how i guess how brains work because yeah like can set you on a real different path of thinking um same goes for soma i don't know if you remember but like in the first room you wake up in it gives away like half the storyline if you just read all of the the data oh really it's a little bit it's a little bit oh yeah i got a whole thing about it in my soma videos because i was blown away mm. i was like they gave away so much information it's right in front of you you just have to piece it together um well, that's why but yeah, this film did remind me of how much I fucking adore sci-fi, and I think I talked to Frankie about like genre, favorite genre, and I was like, it really isn't any particular one. It's just I love the best from all of them. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see that. If a thing is good, it's really good. Yeah. Um. So yeah, go watch it, you disgusting weirdos. Absolutely, it's a good, good sh sh schnitzel. You may like it, you may not. With us having. Have said a lot of it. I think the fun of figuring things out won't be there for you, but maybe the fun of seeing how it all works with that in mind will be there. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like the, the the different dialogue changes because Mother seems to be very, almost aggressive in the beginning when she starts responding, especially with uh oh why why how did you know there's a hazard outside when you can't go outside? There's a uh, oh shit where is it yeah. Like, have I ever lied to you or whatever? It's like, it was really aggressive. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, doing so would make me a hazard to you and I would be would need to be destroyed. And then immediately follows up with, are you unhappy here? I want you to be happy, daughter. It's like, oh, you it's really manipulative. I love the way she speaks. And Rose Byrne did a fucking great job. Yeah. she's. I'm not sure if they did anything special, like with GLaDOS, where I think they had the lady impersonate a auto-tuned version of her own voice and then they auto-tuned that to make it like layered as a robotic sort of voice but mm. i don't know i just found her performance very interesting and i was just thinking i think arguably tied to the the dog the origami she has like origami of all kinds of different animals mm -hmm. and i assume the point being made with that in a sense is like they're all handcrafted oh yeah yeah wink wink nudge nudge yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, there's also the uh, the the first time uh, when the survivor gets into the infirmary when they bring her there because the daughter is getting locked outside and mm -hmm. mother mother is not looking at the daughter but the door is closed and locked is like where you first think like oh shit she's gonna fuck up the survivor like the slasher style thingy and there's like this one line where she says do you see how she's looking at me and it's like you're not how do you know that how she's looking you're not yeah. looking at her at all like what is happening. I think on first watch through, you can be like mother's uh, assumed that she's giving her a particular look, but on yeah. second watch through, you'd be like, mother can probably fucking see her. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> there, there, there's so many little stuff uh, that you probably still can catch like third, fourth, fifth watch through. It's a lot of really small details that are really, really neat in the dialogue and just looking at the, the other, the every things, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, go watch it. It's good shit. It's really good shit. Why are people saying it's Dark Souls Two time now? What is wrong with you? No. I'm having a good time here right now. Jeez. Racism. <laughs> I agree, Dark Souls to them. No. No, Reza, I love you too. Ah, oh, damn. Are you gonna stream some games, I'm guessing, or? Uh, yeah, I think we're... Uh, yeah, I think we're, we don't have anything else. I can't think of anything particular right now. I think we went through the... through pretty well. I think so, too. Yeah. So this is, this is where, where it turns black for YouTube. Chat, wife at YouTube. Say goodbye to YouTube. Goodbye, YouTube. See you next time on the show that doesn't have a name yet. Goodbye. <laughs> Fuck you, YouTube. Every time. <laughs> Mama, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Another one in the can.